Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service this Sunday, the 24th of November, 2024. One month, one day to Christmas. Uh, but yeah, um, what a privilege it is to be with you again this morning. I pray that the Lord speaks to us and that we feel, know, and taste that He is good, that His presence is tangible this morning. Our call to worship is taken from Psalm 126. When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like men who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter. Our tongues were songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping will carry seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with him. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, as we gather this morning, we gather to worship you, to honor you, to praise you. Lord, so many of the scriptures speak of the joy when God restores us, the hope that we have in Christ Jesus, the guidance that we have with the Holy Spirit. What a privilege it is for us, Lord, to just acknowledge that this morning in the presence of our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, to say, here we are, Lord. Thank you. All honor and glory is yours. Bless us this morning, Lord, as we turn to your scriptures, as we read your word. Lord, you know our hearts. You know what needs to be fixed and sorted and done. Um, and you have the perfect tool, the blood of the Lamb. So, Lord, we leave that in your hands as we surrender ourselves to you to be made whole and restored. Lord, your word lies before us. Your message has been prepared. Father, may we earnestly seek hear and listen to your message this morning and leave changed in jesus name we pray amen our reading today is taken from revelation chapter 1 revelation chapter 1 verses 4 to 8 john to the seven churches in the province of asia to the seven churches grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Amen. Just that far this morning, and we ask that the Lord bless those readings to us. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just sometimes I wonder about the lectionary um, because there's so much stuff there for us um, and where it starts and how it ends. But I'd like to this morning, because of that, just go back and read the first three verses, um, which aren't part of it. But I believe they set this amazing scene. Um, for all that follows in Revelation, and in particular, the couple of verses that we look at today. Um, and John writes this, The revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw, that is, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take it to heart, and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. Just breathe that in. Just 
how to let it soak in the emotions, thoughts, expectations, the revelation of Jesus, um, to show what must soon take place. John testifies that this is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. For you and I, a blessing when we read it aloud, when we take it to heart, when we start to take it seriously. And then we get to our passage today, verses 4 to 8. If we just look at it cold, just as it is, um, as really an, quite a reading to put the end of, at the end of the Pentecost season. Um, it's quite a reading to hold on to as we start from next week the journey of Advent, um, the coming, the waiting for the celebration of the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now unto him a child is born. It's quite a reading to use on this reign of Christ, Christ the King Sunday. And yet it is so poignant right now, especially as it comes at the end of a season where us as a congregation have really focused and been drawn back to God, back to God and His sovereignty, back to Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer, our friend, back to the Holy Spirit, our guide. And we're Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The chorus, turn your eyes upon Jesus. All take on a whole new meaning. It's a season that reminds us where our focus should be. Where our attention should be. John, the writer, starts his letter with a reminder. A summary of it, of what we've been through, if you like. Um, let's just take a quick look. In simple terms, you may just read it and go, yeah, well, it's a greeting to the seven churches. They get addressed later in the letter, followed by a declaration that Jesus is coming and ends with, who says it all? God. Okay. But there's so much more. There's so much depth and so much... Power, I don't even think that's the word, but it's amazing. Firstly, John addresses the church. In fact, the seven churches in Asia being Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Secondly, we need to understand that these were real churches. Churches that in every aspect represent every church that has ever existed. All churches, past, present, future, all contain and reflect some of the elements, some of the characteristics of those seven churches. Then we also need to bear in mind that um, the number seven, in a biblical sense, suggests perfection, completion and fullness. And that the seven in verse four, the seven churches, is the first, oh, sorry, not the first, <laughs> the, the seven churches, um, but the, the, the Holy Spirit is the first of 49 sevens in the book of Revelation. Here's some fun facts. Did you know that the light spectrum is made up of seven colors? That there are seven notes to a musical scale? And that there are only seven days in a week? You can dwell on that one. Uh, hint, go Old Testament. And now we get to the really juicy stuff, the beautiful stuff. Starting with the fact that this letter is from God. If you look at it closely, you'll see that every time you John uses the word from, from, to, from, he introduces another member of the Godhead, the Trinity, thereby speaking to the deity of the letter, the validity of the letter. He starts with the Sovereign Father. From Him who was, who is, and is to come. That self-existent one, the great I Am from Exodus 3, the source of grace and peace, the eternal one, the God of history, the God who never changes. John then moves to the sufficient spirit, the Holy Spirit, referred to here in Revelation as seven spirits. 
John seems to use, I think, a bit of poetic license here, speaking about seven spirits when there is only one. The clever people seem to think that John is speaking to the fullness, that perfect number, the, the perfection, the completion of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's be honest, this may cause confusion, because as we know, there is only one spirit. John is probably trying to, or in his head, is going back to the Old Testament, which alludes to the seven elements, element, elements, elements of the sufficiency of the spirit. In Isaiah 11, 2 to 3, we read, The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom of, uh, and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. So there we see it. The Lord, wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, fear. Seven elements. John then turns to the means of, this God's, of God's grace and peace. Jesus the splendid Son who loves us, who set us free from sin by His blood, who made us in the kingdom, a royal priesthood, all for God's glory. Through His revelation as a faithful witness, through His resurrection as the firstborn of the dead, through His royalty as Prince of Kings of the earth, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and above all that is called God, Lord to the glory of God the Father. A worthy son indeed. It's, I don't know, this is beautiful. I really enjoyed this. It's beautiful, poetic, awe-inspiring, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we haven't even started to touch on what is to come, what the letter is all about. It starts with the promise of Jesus coming again. The means of return, coming on a cloud. The great manifestation. I mean, just think about this. We think on a cloud, and then the very next line says, every, every eye will see him. Paul goes even further in Philippians 2, 9-12, saying that, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oh man. And this is followed by the judgment that comes with his coming. For and I, and I hate to say this because it's so sad. I think most will, will find that coming very uncomfortable. Paul in his letter to Timothy and Peter go into a great deal about the judgment, which we're not going to look at today, but there's homework if you like. Go and read um, Paul's letter to Timothy and Peter's letter. Um, the truth is, when Jesus comes again, we will all be judged. Those who believe, and those who don't. The last thing that I believe we need to have a look at this morning, and it's important, I think so anyway, um, and that is that this letter, this revelation, this Jesus coming again, is final. There's no more chances after this. Once this is done, it is done. It is clear. It is finished. It's God's decree. God says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning, Genesis, and the end, Revelation. In good old-fashioned English, thus saith the Lord. Full stop. God underlines this <clears throat> sorry, with his authority. Who is, who was, and who is to come and signs it all off with the Almighty. Yo. In this context, the Almighty means the one who holds sway over everything. The Almighty, Omnipotent God. 
Jesus is coming again. And it's going to happen soon. Jesus is coming again. In conclusion, Eugene Peterson says the revelation of what must soon take place means precisely soon. As soon as hearts are responsive and ears receptive and eyes perceptive, it is all there before us. God's salvation is complete, ready to be received. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. The one who stands at the door is he who gathers past and future into the eternal immediate now. He who is and was and who is to come. There are so many ways we can read, interpret, see and know these few verses. But ultimately it all boils down to one thing. One very very personal and challenging question. Are you and I ready? Have we answered the knock at the door? Are we ready to pray Revelation 22.20? Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, come. One preacher put it this way, he says, Does God have your attention? Are you spiritually sitting on the edge of your seat leaning in eager to hear what Jesus has to say to you because there is no one like Jesus no name higher, no love deeper and no grace richer He is coming again Amen Let us pray Father God, thank you um, and I'm going to start by thanking you from me. That was amazing. Um, just, I, did, I didn't even see it. And I've been through Revelation a few times. I've read a lot of books about Revelation. And just all the threes, the, the God, the Father, the Son, um, the power, the majesty, um, all of this that is there in a few short verses. But ultimately, Lord, it asks all of us this morning, are we ready? Are we expectant when we say, come Lord Jesus, come? Do we believe that you are coming again? Lord, I pray that this sermon, this message that you laid upon my heart lands on very deep and fertile soil. That we may all test and know And that, Lord, each and every one of us have heard your knock and answered the door. Lord, I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. I pray that you've been blessed. Jesus loves you. He's coming again to fetch you. And all I can say to us now is, now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love God's world. Amen.